Deviating from what is normal, some people spend years trying to do just that, while others, well, it kind of just falls right into their lap. Most siblings have trouble getting along from time to time, but imagine the siblings being attached. Giacomo and Giovanni Tocci were born in Locana, Italy between 1875 and 1877. The delivery process of the twins seemed to have been fairly simple since both babies were small in size. Both of the boys' parents were in a complete state of utter shock, however, when greeted with dicephalic conjoined twins. The initial shock in their appearance resulted in their own father experiencing a mental breakdown, sending him off to a month-long recovery evaluation at a lunatic asylum. Both Giacomo and Giovanni were joined at their sixth rib and shared two legs, the same genitals, and intestines. Despite the odds being stacked against them, the boy's father had an interesting plan in order to make the family some extra money. At four weeks old, the newborn twins were escorted from their hometown to the city of Turin, Italy. Their father desired additional financial income and thought it would be best to take the boys to Turin's Freak Show, where professors from the Turin Academy of Medicine could further exhibit the children. Astonished by the conjoined twins, Giacomo and Giovanni went on to serve the remainder of their childhood and adolescent years being exhibited in front of the public as a form of entertainment throughout major cities in Europe. Their popularity grew substantially over the course of their time with the freak show, and together, Giacomo and Giovanni became known as the Two-Headed Boy. Though the twins shared one body, both possessed polar opposite personalities and were intelligent individuals that spoke Italian, German, and French. Giovanni appeared to be introverted and enjoyed drinking mineral water, while Giacomo appeared to be extroverted and enjoyed quenching his thirst with beer. Unable to walk, they could only stand and would either use a wheelchair to move or crawled around on the ground whenever possible. In 1891, the boys traveled on an extensive American freak show tour that earned them $1,000 a week. Intriguing many across America, their one-year tour turned into a five-year public exhibition. With their overwhelming earnings, the boys were able to eventually retire in 1897 and lived out the rest of their days in a villa in Venice, Italy. The long years of being used as a form of entertainment caused the twins to stay hidden in their villa as they both desired privacy from the public eye. Giacomo and Giovanni married two women in 1904, however numerous reports speculate whether the two were actually dead or alive throughout the early 1900s. Together, the conjoined twins remained hidden from the media and led private lives together. It is not known when they passed away or if they ever had their own children. She was said to be the sweetest little farm girl you would ever meet, and just wait until you get a look at her legs. Myrtle Corbin was born on May 12, 1868 in Lincoln County, Tennessee to William and Nancy Corbin. Doctors immediately noticed that the newborn suffered from dipygus, a congenital deformity that caused her to develop her own pelvis while carrying the pelvis and underdeveloped legs of her twin. Out of all eight siblings, Myrtle was the only child to develop a rare medical deformity. Regardless of the spare pelvis and legs, her family reported that she thrived and was a perfectly healthy child. At the age of 13, Myrtle joined the sideshow circuit and was known as the four-legged girl from Texas. Though she physically exhibited four legs, only one leg was dominant over the rest due to a single clubbed foot and the two small legs which she could move but she could not use for walking. Her main attraction was to dress up her extra limbs and stockings, and because of this, she would go on to earn as much as $450 a week. Being the unique figure she was had caused other performers to try to recreate her unusual physical appearance with phony limbs once she had left the sideshow business. Though she was successful in her adolescent years, Myrtle went on to get married when she was 19 years old, and together they settled down having four daughters and one son. Doctors were able to conclude that each pelvis contained reproductive organs, which successfully gave her the ability to conceive. Due to her extraordinary condition, Myrtle was featured in a number of medical journals throughout her life. Her incredible condition caused a major impact in the medical world, and on May 6, 1928, 
Myrtle passed away surrounded by friends and family in Cleburne, Texas. In 1885, Martin Emmerling was born in Nuremberg, Germany, and seemed like just a normal boy. Growing up, Martin didn't appear to have any external deformities. However, he was born with a twisted spine. As a young adult, he was able to train himself to twist his head a full 180 degrees. Martin knew he could make a living from his talent and decided to move from Germany to America with other European sideshow performers in 1921. It didn't take long for him to pursue an incredibly successful career performing with popular sideshow businesses such as Ripley's Believe It or Not and the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey. His increase in popularity inspired him to change his name to Martin Lorello, but he took on a number of different names such as The Human Owl, The Man with the Revolving Head, and Bobby, The Boy with the Revolving Head. His unusual talent did leave many skeptical. When confronted, Martin stated that it took him three years to train his body into twisting abnormal lengths. The training had caused Martin to dislocate vertebrae and even caused him to lose complete air circulation while twisting his head on stage. His acts caused him to attract massive crowds wherever he went and landed him on TV shows throughout the 1930s to 1950s. Martin was also known for training dogs and cats on stage, making them perform acrobatic tricks at his command. Though he did appear to be an amazing man who left his audience feeling amused and disturbingly unsettled, he didn't seem to carry the best reputation off stage. Sideshow performer Priscilla the Monkey Girl Bajano described Martin as a Nazi and an extremely unpleasant man. In 1931, Martin was arrested by police in Baltimore after abandoning his wife in New York. Martin's last recorded appearance was on the show You Asked For It in 1952. It would be three years later in 1955 when he would suffer a fatal heart attack at the age of 70. No one has since been able to display the same exact abnormal talents as Martin, making him an incredible part of Sideshow history. That's all for now. Remember, you may not believe it, but anything is possible in a world so seriously strange. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to push subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of Seriously Strange, and I will see you next time.